Good evening, everyone. For some of you, that is good evening again, and for some of you, that is good afternoon, because you're not actually in the EU. Welcome to another 2MK Absolver stream. There was a couple of minutes of stream previously, but it's probably been deleted now, and it happened primarily because the game is having its usual trouble forming what is the equivalent of a lounge. This trouble may continue, so I'm not necessarily going to commit to saying too much on this stream yet until it is cleared up. Here we are. Or maybe here we are. And so if this is working, people will receive their invites, people will be pulled into this session, and so on. If it is not working today, we may have some limitations in what exactly we can stream, but there should still be some stream action. Assuming that I don't have to restart too many times just to get it to work at all. The situation happens primarily because of the way that they handle geographical locations synchronizing to each other in the game. And as we are on our EU stream, our EU player is not in the same geographical location as the rest of us, obviously, and therefore there is some extra work involved in getting things all together. In this case, that extra work being starting to stream over yet again or something. So I'm going to let one of them invite me instead. And let me see if I can get in that way. But there have been quite a few streams and launches that had delays and technical difficulties in them today. So, not ours, just generally. Alright then, a minor blip in video, but it looks like this works, at least this time. I generally was trying to avoid those, but given the option between that and taking stream down entirely, not much help is it. Absolver is a game where you make your own character in terms of their fighting style. And you distribute some relatively minor stats in order to make them vary about as much as characters in a standard fighting game do. Alright, looks like everyone is here, so we can hop down and head into the arena that we have chosen for today. Or at least we could a moment ago, and I have no idea what happened to it. Hopefully my side is not yet again stuck in some way. But that looks flickery and laggy, so who knows. Fortunately, I can stand in the middle of this place and still show off things that would help you understand the game itself.
The combat deck is quite simply the moves you have chosen to put to be available to you. On the left side you're able to see moves that are strings similar to Dead or Alive and Tekken. For example, you could consider this one. You can see the leftmost move there looks like a high quick punch, which it is. Meaning that when I am in my character's back left stance, I have access to my light punch. As with many games, if you keep on pressing the same button, an auto combo style thing will happen. And I also am allowed to choose what that quote unquote auto combo is. Striking with that punch leaves my character in the front right stance, just due to kinetic energy mostly. And therefore it is followed with a kick that turns the body. And then finally, since that has put me in a back right stance, you can tell by the little white parts of the diamond things on the left of these. A flying kick follows. I can choose not to do that entire combo by just not pressing the button three times. And my character will return to neutral. On the right side, these are singular attacks that don't have the combo chain property, which can be helpful at various times. see if things have resolved themselves in some direction. Unfortunately, apparently not. There we go. Sort of. No. Magic was happening. There we go. Right. Much better. Onward then. Well, this is my opponent for the day one way or the other as of just this spot, so we'll see if we can work out some other stuff later, but for now, to battle! You control which move you do, therefore by which stance you are in, and you control which stance you are in by using a button that changes your stance. In our case, it is meant to work with some directions, but which button you're holding may be different for other people. While this might give you the impression that it's relatively easy to tell what your opponent's going to do stance-wise, the ability to feint through things is not all that difficult. It's literally just part of the game state. By tapping block during your attack, and that will help. Other than that, it's your standard battle of frame data. And in some cases, other aspects of the game that you understand due to your defensive options, which consists mainly of bat dashing and using the special defense that's available to your character based on their, let's call it, class.
not moving tight. Either that or we're just having the usual problem of someone lost and therefore the respawn system is getting all weird. Of course, in general, one normally does not care that you are having difficulty, let's say, connecting to people from a very far off geographical region because you don't have terribly good connection to those people anyway. But in our case, we normally have a good enough connection to our EU member and are just dealing with the actual geographic location limitations. But that was one match, and I have no idea how it's going to behave in the other sense, so I'm going to run off and try to check on something else. Here's a nearby arena you can use if you want to have Ring Out as an option. We do not. We did that last week. So I'm changing zones as it will load, unload, reload a bunch of other people. And similarly, return. They have a nice system for this. The middle grounds just leave you wherever you were until you actually cross out of them. And therefore by returning to the Colosseum, I'm able to see Black Death, but also, once again, face the situation of being able to reach my teammates in other ways. This game does have, as you can see here, an NPC fighting mode, which is absolutely required as you cannot technically gain new moves outside of the starting moves for your style, the techniques that come with your defensive ability, in this case for me, the quick movement defense. You must defend against moves in order to learn them, and therefore the NPC aspect of the game is quite required. We have been able to recently verify that that space is only three, so we get a three-person lounge, so to speak. But the specifics of that really change sometimes because if you are, again, geographically not in the same space, people will get randomly loaded and not loaded from different positions. see that fighting 2v1 is also a skill you can probably build up. In this case I'm probably going to have issues because these characters are just about as strong as a player. But it's also a good way to see what happens in terms of where I reload and whether or not it changes any specific thing. In general you will respawn at wherever you entered the area.
And there's no penalties really for losing or dying or any of those things. You just don't get the experience from whatever moves you defended against in the battle. So quite literally your only downside. Haha, -ha, I have escaped. If you're familiar with our other content, it probably won't be too difficult to recognize the styles of the players involved here. And we are each working to get better adaptations to see if we can all improve. Even though this game is only really intended to be on our list, you could say, for another few weeks at best. You might see it a little more often if something is particularly wrong with DNF Duel on any given day. Maybe it won't have any lounges, maybe it'll be on maintenance. Maybe we'll have to change the whole thing because they will choose to do Sunday maintenance at exactly this time for some reason. But that game is the one that is going to be taking that s this Sunday slot in our content schedule. Hello to you too. Now I am out of the way and they can begin their battle. We generally choose to do this in this way because there is no actual lounge, per se. You cannot force the game to generally match up with a specific person easily, even though it does have a standard fighting game style 1v1, first to three, special arena, the game will count the rounds for you. All of those things are a part of a game mode. but. So far, there's no way to make that game mode match you with any specific person. You just go up against whoever matchmaking thinks is the best fit for you at the moment through whatever metric it normally uses. As you can see, between rounds, if you could call them that, the winning player does not restore all of their health. They restore some, but this is limited. But this will also happen in the first to three other official mode, meaning that you get about the same experience either way, whether you get together with your friends like this and train, or go out into the wide world and have to deal with different people. Similarly, you are not losing anything by doing that as you do actually also gain the moves and you gain them after rounds instead of gaining them at the end of the whole match. So you can still get something out of it either way. My camera work is getting better, but still not best, so please forgive it. The shockwave attack you've been seeing happen, along with the effect that Sun has just triggered, come from the meter options. At the moment, you can't necessarily see it very easily, but there's like five dark shards on my character's left hip, which represent their meter. Those build up over time as you defend against attacks primarily, 
So just beating people up doesn't tend to lead to as much. Therefore successfully doing this gives you more options and you get to choose what those options are. One of them is almost always change to using your other stance or weapon, but we don't generally do that at the moment. That will probably come up later. But beyond that, you have a choice of about five things. You'll see the shockwave a lot because it is part of footsies, technically, and you're dealing with that style of player. But there are other options, such as the armored state that you see Sun go into sometimes. You might not necessarily know what I'm referring to, but it is an armored state. Rune Siren's gravity state, which slows the opponent for a short time and disarms them if they happen to be using a weapon, but is easier to use just for the you are slow now. And my own stamina lock. Alright then, back to sun beating me up mostly. The stance I am usually in against this player is not one from which I can easily defend because my offense and defense get placed off from each other. But it is a good point of practice because I so seldom use this stance against other people. They don't fight at close enough ranges where I need it. Since we are both close range, quick hit fighters, it's very difficult to get a straight advantage in a lot of situations. So we spend a lot more time making sure that the stance we are in is the one with a quick attack to use. This is compounded by the fact that a lot of the time your opponent will just block and knowing that they are in their quick attack stance means that you can't necessarily force them to stay blocking long enough to lose their capacity to block, which happens when the stamina gauge, you can see it under Sun's health gauge and of course for me in the middle of the screen, when this gauge runs out you can no longer block. You will take at least one hit at which point the gauge will basically entirely refill. But you don't really get much out of that. So the tactics we use against each other are very complex compared to other matches you would see in the close range sense. There's a lot of very careful management of stamina, understanding of the other person's intentions along with their flows, and the use of moves and combos that aren't normally used as much. I'm definitely using some sequences that are less familiar to me now because I haven't had to use them in so long. And because you build your own 
deck, which is your move set to begin with, this is entirely up to you. So I not only know where those moves are on my character, I chose to put them there. In this case, I have therefore kind of lost the flow I was aiming for because I was specifically trying to make sure that my opponent's stamina fell so that I could actually use something. But sun stamina went to carefully controlled, let's say. Having a faster sweep than me definitely helps. Now I am the one who mismanaged their stamina and have died. So things continue between the two of them. Obviously I had less to say because of the intensity of that, but you probably got to see a lot of things that will now be at least somewhat recognizable. Rosarin and I, as usual, fight fairly similarly, have a lot of moves shared, but again, since you can basically build things as you want, though we started from the same style and therefore retained many of the moves that come with it in the base, there are some definite choice differences. So you'll see the same sort of low swinging kick from the right, quick hopping kicks and sweeps, but she also has multiple higher kicks, long lunging, overheads sort of, and a few more naturally tr quick straight punches than I do. These things, of course, help in footsies. But you can play a full-on pressure game too if you really want to. This is normally a matter of just using quick punches, building your character's stamina up to the maximum, and then having some relatively strong mix-up after one of your plus moves, because this game does in fact straight up have plus moves. They just don't necessarily matter because it's similar to DOA and Tekken, where you're not necessarily plus by an entire move, you're just plus and your opponent will lose if they hit a move around the same speed as your own. Meaning that the mix-up is often much more so block or not block than it is one of the other ways you could think of. Of course, people could consider this much more realistic. After all, like reality does not really have the left-right mix-up. Both these players do, however, share the defensive option that I also use, and that is to perfectly evade an attack if you can figure out which way you need to evade it. Uh -huh. 
using one of the analog sticks while in battle, you can dodge to the left. Obviously, you can dodge to the right. And of course, you can duck under things and hop over those. But you must do all of these things absolutely correctly, and in many cases, time them correctly as well. It does save you from having to block though, and blocking lowers your stamina, whereas using your defensive ability correctly will restore some of it. You can think of it as getting to take a breath because you were either confident or just relaxed into the evasion instead. For various reasons, we tend to think of it as confidence simply because the other forms of defensive ability in this game involve either outright parrying or sort of armoring through things, which you could really argue are not particularly different from blocking in that regard. You can see a lot more meter usage between these two for that reason, but I believe that's 3-2, so I am back to fighting Sun again. This may look confusing if you don't actually know the differences between our characters as a generality, but to me, this is completely normal. And this is a very large setup of tactical situations. For example, I'm basically assuming that eventually my opponent will run out of stamina to block with. Because when we fight, there is so much micromanagement of stamina that when one of us gets low, they are basically at disadvantage just because of that and nothing else. This is why when I have the chance to get away with quick moves, I usually take it. But I similarly need to convince my opponent to block really powerful moves so that their stamina can drop and I can keep going. As you get better and learn different things about different opponents, you will also find yourself understanding the gaps or holes in their styles. For example, I'm fairly sure that Sun already sees one of the main ones in mine. If I'm using a specific quick kick combo, it basically must be as a punish or I won't be in a position to keep a certain thing from happening. As you can see, that basically lasted for as long as it took my stamina to recharge. The game also has specific gold links as it's called. A cancel that is slightly different because you are confident enough in it to just do it. I got pushed out of that. And I don't, unfortunately, I didn't really want that to happen in that way. Partially because, though it is a powerful guard break attack, it's difficult to follow it because of the long recovery on my own strikes and the fact that the stance I end up in after it is not a stance where I get to do attacks easily. Not the ones I want to do anyway. That's more so what I would be aiming at when I do want to use that one. 
a longer string that leads to it changing up and me getting to do that that way. I'm not sure if we're actually resetting that, but we are far enough into the stream that it would make more sense to reset it rather than not. Either way, time to battle! And you get to see the contrast of players with a very different length of style. We do not fight from close range much. If that's happening, it's usually because one of us made an error more so than that someone wants it to happen. In this case, it's me making the error. As I'm often aggressive, but really should bat dash in more situations in this fight. As the ranges I get without bat dashing don't generally work out better for me. I'm just used to Rune Siren being the one to bat dash and I mean not having to bother to do it. But as she improves on it, so must I. And therefore bat dashes must come. As she is stronger at evasive moves, not the actual evasive skill, specifically the moves part. That similarly was what you'd expect when someone reads your bat dash out of pressure and goes for something large. I faded out of that because I did not believe my opponent was going to come back after it. So you do get to see the entirety of the standard fighting game flow, but it is a little bit harder to understand slash see it if you don't actually know exactly what's going on there. I'm going to bet that meant that she ended up in her combat trial. And therefore, we are somewhat resetting this again. But that's probably fine. As it was about time to switch, but we're going to have to rely on the fact that Omni is watching a stream and therefore can set that up for us. Or not, apparently. Okay. It looks like I am still on the EU side. The problem is that there's no way to get Omni over here, but it looks like Sun is still in fat in my session. And therefore, uh, though I lost, loser stays on for now, I guess. That flicker you see just now is the fact that one of my moves has a built-in parry to it. But this is not common. It's difficult to play, or rather, difficult to build your style in if you are not familiar with your style from other games. Especially if you aren't the sort of person who has spent a lot of time in other games thinking about why your characters that you choose are the ones that you choose. If you are even the type to specifically choose characters, and not just either pick a top tier, basically play whoever is currently considered the strongest, or Consider yourself adaptable to a lot of situations.
I'm pretty sure it was luck because that was my best combo and my opponent does not normally fall for that one. Barely made it. And that was an error because I really should have gone for the shockwave instead. Keep the sun away from me while I recharged my meter rather than have it go this way. Alright, so I have one more invite that I can use. But it looks like it's getting close to loser stays on again. Though probably I'll just watch them fight instead as a result of it. Close though. So. One more. You can already see, at least a little bit, if you're very familiar with fighting games, possibly why the moves chosen are where they are. Their usual purpose is to create a mix-up or a spacing situation that you prefer for some reason. I have many situations in which my opponent could sidestep out of certain advances and then a very very long high kick that chases that sidestep because it has such a low wide arc. into parry and uh, okay well that probably means I can now accept said invite hopefully that will work correctly and give Sun time to poke around if there's any deck that needs changing because I believe he did have some mention of planning to work on a separate style. As you can store up to three, I believe. And while you can't change between them in battle, that's a different sort of technique using your weapon. You can basically pick a different variation of your character, or in some cases you could perceive it as picking an entirely new character. As you can, once you've got enough moves, make it all completely different. What you cannot change though is mainly your character's physical capacity. If you've built them to have high health and usually build meter, then that's going to stay the same no matter which moveset you choose. So bear that in mind. For this reason, most people don't have terribly different sighting styles. They have variations on the main one they like, and those variations can be quite heavy, but it's usually not, alright, I'm changing from a close range boxer to a long range tanking through stuff style player, particularly because you cannot easily change your character's other defensive option. You're still stuck using just the same. If I'm dodging, I'm going to be dodging regardless of which style I choose to use. I believe that's Omni running around to attempt or re-attempt adding a third person back to our quote-unquote lounge. <laughs> mm. 
We, however, are now bat fighting. Similarly here, you'll see a lot more moves meant to get into a very specific space and do either a really long range whiff punish or a big setup. My opponent, however, is style doesn't rely as much on perfectly understanding what exactly is coming, but does rely on understanding perfectly the timing is coming in. That was my fault. Overcommitted into full combo, no less. And I finally learned the front kick. I have no intention of using this front kick. But there might be a style in which I choose to do this. I was not expecting that to be a kick at all. I let go of block. Moves like that tend to take a huge chunk out of your opponent's stamina gauge. They're not true guard breaks, as you can see my opponent was able to continue blocking and therefore guarding altogether, but if they're lower on stamina, it's a lot easier to guard break them from those positions. As I mentioned earlier in the stream though, mistiming that guard break so that the move is actually the guard breaking move, for me, is not a good thing because the rest of my style does not work around that. My aim would always be to understand what my opponent's approximate stamina looks like, to know this is the spot at which I should do this move, but not with the intention of it being the guard breaker, it being the next to last move. Interestingly, these moves are basically meant to be blocked. They do decent damage, but only on heavy hitter characters will they actually do enough damage that you could think of them as this is a thing I need to do as part of my win condition of hitting and hurting people. Which is why, obviously, my character only really has one. The long lunging one you could probably manage to avoid in lots of ways. So that's not really the one we're dealing with here. This one is important because people who are in the mental state of needing to stop you from doing things by punching are more likely to be hit by that one. We have had the opportunity to make this more and more intense as the weeks have gone on. Which is another good reminder of how fighting games work as a generality. It can be easy to get discouraged when you're fighting against people you don't necessarily understand because they will be using all of their best tricks and most of the time you have to defend against all of them. But it's good to keep in mind that regardless of how that goes, even if like the first order strategy of the entire world is to just do this thing you're not good at defending against and for whatever reason you're not doing the same thing or are not good enough at doing that same thing to cause enough damage, there is almost always a way to beat it. And you know how you tell? Just go watch any high level players matches. If you don't see the thing that's beating you up be a constant thorn in their side, 
It doesn't even matter if you don't see them actually counter it. If you just see it never get used at the high level, that's probably the situation. That it has a really difficult but real counter, probably the sort of counter where you don't actually expect it to ever work. And that means that high level players will use it on each other only in last resort situations. That means that they have taken the time to practice it out of their problem space. We similarly have this experience when fighting each other, but because we don't often use the First Order strategies well enough, or don't have that as a primary goal, it's a little bit more difficult. The First Order strategy in this game usually involves a lot of pressure. You can block your way through it, and one of the first things it will help you learn is, what is my preferred defense stance? Since you can change your stance while defending, you are always able to, with enough muscle memory, put yourself into the defensive stance required to do your quick punish, or, depending on what move your opponent is doing, since you can change your stance even basically during block stun. It doesn't have to be your quickest punish either. It can just be the one that suits the move you're dealing with. I believe I mentioned before that the need to use that quick drop kick style attack, well not quick one, the axe kick style attack is based almost entirely on fighting sun specifically because my other opponents will get out of the way because they're not equipped for or generally completely aiming for close range combat at the same level. So in the spaces where I need this move, they're not doing the same things. In fact, sometimes I can't even get my standard attacks off after a certain thing. I would have to link differently. But now we're at the point where because I must bat dash, my stamina runs out and I'm back to thinking about this match in a different way. But it is now moving into the final on stream of match. As noted, within a few weeks, DNF2 will be released, and it will be the stream content you get in this slot most of the time. But if you are interested in this game, you can still check back every now and again at 7.30 Central European Time and at 7.30 Eastern Time on Sundays to see if we're streaming. If we're not streaming, you might even get a tweet on our Twitter to underscore MK underscore FGC explaining explicitly that we are not. Or there will be a tweet to say that we are, and that you can come at least watch. Due to the nature of Absolver, of course, joining in is quite a bit harder. You'd have to come tell us literally on stream that you wanted to try. As their open world only holds three people per instance. This is pretty helpful to prevent, let's call it, griefing while still letting people get some fairly organic experiences in, but in the end, it's still limiting in that form. This game, of course, has no 
bots. And by bots, I mean our training mode recording conglomerations. Basically, put five of them together, you get something that you can use to practice with. Something that you are less likely to be familiar with if you are joining in because you just see a weird game and want to look at it. Or are an Absolver fan but don't necessarily play other fighting games. Still, if you are a different fighting game player who is here partially because we normally do other content, you probably already know where to find our bots on our website 2-mk.org. But in case you didn't, you do now. We did not in fact get the time to complete the work on our Iori bot or our Robert bot technically for King of Fighters, but that will probably get done today, at least somewhat. As it's quite likely that this whole thing has gotten people a little fired up and they'll be more interested in getting some practice in. But this round now, I believe, will bring us to the end of the stream altogether. Which is good for me because I'm... They've, they've reached a point where I'm literally no longer tracking. I'm sure that to them this fight makes a lot of sense. And I know it's not chaos because once I see a decision made, I think to myself that the spacing was very important, but I actually don't know what makes the move choices happen right now. I think that was over in Omni's favor, but I'm not sure. Yes, apparently it was. So, if you find yourself interested in this, you have another maybe two to three weeks to watch us at it and possibly join in. Poke us about anything you want to. But you can expect the next stream of this to be tonight at 7.30 Eastern Time or a tweet that will tell you that we're not having that stream. This has been really in for Team 2MK. Good luck with your training and good night, everyone.